Hello viewers, um, I'm going to be showing you a sample question for the forthcoming uh, wired chemistry particle questions. So I want you to look carefully. Um, we are going to be running our test on sample C. So we have to carefully follow the instructions written here and record our observations and write our valid inferences. Okay, so before I start, I would like to show us the, um, the reagents for today's salt test. So the first one is our sodium hydroxide solution, which you know is very, very necessary for test of cations. Okay, we also have um, our um, aqueous ammonia, which is our ammonium hydroxide. We have... Um, the barium chloride solution. This is a barium chloride solution. We also have um, our hydrochloric acid, potassium dichromate acidified. We also have um, other um, instruments or let me say apparatuses used for qualitative analysis. So also in the lab here, we have um, uh, students of Bluebell International School, grade 12 students of Bluebell International School. You can see them, how beautiful and wonderful they are looking. They're already set for today's um, qualitative analysis. So in a short while, we'll be starting. So do you have anything to say to your viewers? Subscribe. Wow, I said subscribe to the channel. Okay. Oh. Subscribe to the channel. Oh, that's good. That's like, wonderful. All right. It's all, all right. All right. Okay. So, in a short while, we'll be starting this um, salt test. So, so, already you have your sample C. Please, can you raise the sample C up so that we all can see? That's the sample C in the petri dish. Okay. Now, the first instruction says you should add. 10 cm cube of distilled water, put all of C, put all of C in your test tube and add 10 cm cube of distilled water. Add 10 cm cube of distilled water. Add 10 cm cube of distilled water. So when you are to add water to a salt sample, what are you testing for? If we add water to the salt sample, we are basically testing for the solubility. For the solubility of the salt, that's accurate. You are testing for the solubility of the salt. So in our observation, we are going to state either the salt is soluble or insoluble. Then in our conclusion, we either say soluble salt present or insoluble salt present. Okay, just 10 cm cube of distilled water. You can see. You can see that obviously C is insoluble in water. So it is obvious. Um, please, uh, Miss Oyinko, what can you say about the salt mixture you are looking at? Is it soluble or insoluble? Insoluble. Okay, that's insoluble salt. Okay, so that's what I'm going to write uh, enter in your record book now. That the salt is what insoluble. Please go ahead and do that. Okay, so the next thing is to divide the filtrate into three portions. Divide the filtrate into three portions. Okay, that's part one, portion one. So we have another portion. That's the second one. Okay, then the third one, now whenever you want to hold a test tube, it's expected you hold it here at the neck, are you getting what I'm saying, so you will be observing what is happening down, okay, so take note of that. So we are done dividing the uh, filtrates. Now the next thing we need to do is to follow the instruction that says To the first question, add sodium hydroxide in drops and then in excess Okay, add sodium hydroxide, so you need your dropper 
add in drops. I want all of, all of you to be present so you tell us the color of the precipitate. Now remember that when a precipitate is formed, the nature of the precipitates can be, you know, um, can either be cloudy, gelatinous, and you get what I'm saying? A white cloudy precipitate, the gelatinous. Is it gelatinous when, they, when it is sticking to the walls of the tube? That's when we say it is gelatinous. Are you get what I'm saying? All right, so add drops of your sodium hydroxide. Who is doing that? Okay. Okay. What's the observation? Please don't shake. Don't shake so they will make the observation first. So, what's the color of the precipitate? Please add, add another drop. You shook it. That was why the precipitate disappeared. So, please look carefully now. So, what's the color of the precipitate, all of you? Okay. So, we, we call this dirty green gelatinous what precipitate. Now, it is expected that when you allow this precipitate to be exposed to the atmosphere for some time, it will turn brown. What is the confirmation that oxidation has taken place? Changing ion 2 to ion 3. Are you getting what I'm saying? All right. So, when you are asked to add in excess, what I want to find out is if the precipitate now formed in step 1 above is soluble or not, or insoluble. So we're going to add that sodium hydroxide to that green precipitate in excess. Now, if the precipitate persists, that means it is insoluble. But when it dissolves, that means it is what? Soluble. So let us see what happens to that precipitate that was formed in step one. Add more so that they will know that you've added in SS. Add more. Okay? Good. Okay, show it to them. Let them look at it. Is the precipitate dissolved or not? It's not dissolved. That means it is insoluble. Are you getting what I'm saying? All right. Okay, um, to the second uh, part of the question, we are asked to add aqueous ammonia to the second portion of the filtrate and you can see we have added in drops so what we have here is a dirty green gelatinous precipitate so like i said earlier that the chemistry of sodium hydroxide with ion 2 is the same thing as the chemistry of ammonium hydroxide with what ion 2 you are going to get the same result so when you add in drops, you will get dirty green gelatinous precipitates. And when you add in excess, let's see what will happen when you add in excess. So add excess of the aqueous ammonia to the result you got in step one. So can you check the, um, the precipitate? Is this soluble or not? If it passes, that means it is insoluble. Can you see that it is insoluble in excess of the reagent? So the same report you had with sodium hydroxide is what I'm going to write also with aqueous what? Ammonia. Understood? So why not go ahead and write that? Okay, now the next question says uh, to the third portion of the filtrate, add barium chloride solution followed by dilute hydrochloric acid in excess. So um, here is this young scientist here that wants to carry out the test. So add your barium chloride to the filtrate in drops, please. So, are you seeing something? Yeah, the so white. What can you see there? White gelatinous precipitate. I don't think that is gelatinous. Is this white gelatinous? Cloudy. Huh? Okay, cloudy precipitate. All right, so you have white cloudy precipitates, okay? Yes. All right, so you have to add your HCl in SS. So remember I said, when you add barium chloride to the filtrate and you get a white precipitate, what it means is that uh, tetraoxosulfate cis ion 
is probably present. Trioxosulfate for ion is probably present. Um, Trioxocarbonate for ion is probably present. Or sulfide ion is probably what present. So what they're going to write here, where you have white, white what PPT formed. Okay. So my inference will be. SO4, good. Uh huh. SO3, SO3 2 minus. CO3 2 minus. CO3 2 minus. And then S2 minus. That's it. So these ions forms white precipitate with. Um, okay, now to the um, fourth uh, portion, that is the residue. The residue, we are to add sodium hydroxide to the residue. And now heat gently. Add sodium hydroxide to the residue and heat gently. So we are going to add sodium hydroxide. Please, when you add sodium hydroxide, you're expected to come also with your red litmus paper. So somebody is to moisten the red litmus paper. And then as you are heating, you bring the moist red litmus paper close to um okay have you done that yeah. so warm it gently warm it gently please don't don't put yet allow the thing to start boiling so because there's a gas that's meant to come out and that's the gas we are testing for so remember the chemistry of ammonia gas i hope you know that yeah. so what will ammonia if ammonia is a gas what will happen to that uh, it thank you it turns uh, moist Red litmus paper, what blue in this ammonia? Please bring it closer. All right, so you can bring your bring your moist litmus paper. So let us see if ammonia gas is present in that sample. Please, uh, uh, can you hold hold a uh, bring test tube holder for her, please? Bring test tube holder. You can see is it turning blue? You can see that portion is already turning blue. Can you see that? Okay, it's turning blue already. <laughs> Zoe was holding test tube with her bare hands. <laughs> okay, I remember the way, just the way Precious is keeping it now. You keep it away from your nose, okay? That is a way to heat a sample. So can you bring it now? Can you see the color change now? Can you see it now? Yes. All right, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. All right, so we're done. So the observable change in the color of the litmus paper. Right, so now to the um, final part of the analysis, we are asked to add to the residue of C sodium hydroxide and warm gently. So I warm gently. We have done that, and um, from what we observed, a gas with a choking smell, which turned moist red litmus paper blue, was evolved. And that can only be ammonia gas from ammonium ion. So that brings us to the end of today's salt test. Now let me go back to the wonderful um, scientists that um, conducted this research. So let us hear from them what they have to say. All right. Now at the end of our chemistry practical, and we finally found that the ammonia gas was more present in sample C. Once again, I am precious. I am Zenken Gary. And I hope that you subscribe, turn up with notifications, like and comment, and share. And share. <laughs>